We have just passed the halfway mark of our homeschool sixth grade year, and today I want to just share with you how we are doing in math and science. Now, I have already provided an update for language arts, which I will make sure that I link down below so that you can check that out as well. So math and science, how are we doing? Well, we're doing really well in a nutshell. Math has been great all year, and science has had a little bit of a bumpy road, but I think that we've gotten there. So let's get started. Let's talk math math. We are using Singapore Dimensions Math 6. Now we did switch to Singapore Dimensions from Abeka in my daughter's fourth grade year. So this is our third year of using Singapore Dimensions. We really like it. I'm thankful that we switched to it and we are really enjoying it. Now, Singapore Dimensions does only go through eighth grade and we right now we are planning on using this for seventh grade and eighth grade unless something drastic happens. Now, Singapore Dimension 6 is set up like the other Singapore Dimensions where you do have an A and then a B for the different semesters. So the first part of the year is A, second part of the year is B. And then we have a textbook as well as a student workbook. I also have the teacher's manual. I do have a flip through of this entire system, which I will again, will make sure that I link down below. So make sure that you check it out and you can see how Singapore Dimensions is set up. But overall, we are doing really well. My daughter likes it. I was talking to her just today about if she wanted to continue with Dimensions into seventh grade or if she was looking for something else. And she said she definitely wanted to continue Dimensions, that she she really likes it. And so I'm very happy to hear that. A few things to note about Dimension 6, which I did not notice in 4 or 5, but I have noticed in 6, is that at the end of each chapter, they have what is called a problem solving corner. And basically what it is, it is learning to apply the concepts that you have learned to pretty difficult problems. Now, some of these problems are extremely difficult and some of them are just a little bit difficult, but they all require an understanding of the concept and then some higher order thinking. And so these are problems that we really tackle saying, if we get them right, that's great. If we don't, we can just learn from them. It's not a big deal if we don't get these right because they are really some higher level thinking problems, but it's good to stretch. And so I'm thankful that Dimensions does that. I do like these. At first, I was a little overwhelmed with how difficult they were, but we have grown to really appreciate the fact that it does encourage some, some true problem solving and some true thinking about the problems. Now there are the answers in the teacher's manual, but sometimes I do have to sit down and really think about these before we even discuss them in class because some of them are difficult. But that's okay because we are learning a lot in sixth grade, as my daughter says. Now, something else to note, which I do mention in the flip through video, is they only have the answers in this Dimensions Workbook Answer Solutions. This is for both of the workbooks. So this is for A and for B. The thing that I do not like about this is that they do not include the problems. So you can see it is simply the answers. They do explain how you got to that answer, but you don't know the problem. And so w with that, I can't just have my daughter say, look at page 156, problem number nine, because the pages aren't included on here. It's purely under the lessons. So this is something that is a little bit challenging when we are discussing the problems and going over them orally, but that's okay. We are making it work. It is not something that is worth me scrapping dimensions because of this. It is just a speed bump that we have to overcome. Now, speaking of speed bumps that we have to overcome, my daughter, for whatever reason, um, decided that she was going to forget some of her multiplication tables. I really don't know why, because she uses them quite frequently, but she was just having a hard time with multiplication tables. And so what I did was I purchased this dice set 
and we would take out two dice. And so I do have a 12 sided die. I have an eight sided one. We do have the regular six. And then also there is a nine sided die in this packet. And so we would take two. I would set her, um, I would set the timer for about a minute and she would have to roll these and then say the entire problem. 11 times one equals 11. 12 times 11 equals 132. And so as she rolled them, she would say the problem, she would say the answer, and I would keep track of the number that she got right. Every time she increased by four within that minute, she would get some kind of prize. Now, the prize is specific to my daughter. It's things that she likes, but it was never something that cost a lot of money or anything like that. It was just an incentive for her to be able to do this faster and to be able to remember these multiplication tables. And it worked. This was one of our favorite things that we did this year to help with multiplication. And it was a lot of fun and we will continue to do it because she likes that challenge of being able to do them faster and to be able to win those prizes. Something else that we introduced this year were these PowerPoint openers. I love them. They are amazing with review and just really fast openers to think about math. Get you start to think about it and get you in the math mode. They have different ones for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they all have a theme. So Tuesday would be true or false Tuesday. Then you have think tank Thursday, etc. And this was from Teachers Pay Teachers. I love these. She has it set up so that there are different ones for each month with a monthly theme. And I will include down below that link on Teachers Pay Teachers. Now I'm also using Dare to Compare Math. This is a workbook from the Critical Thinking Company and we are just using this very slowly. The, it has three problems per day and it's all about comparing things. Which one's longer, which one's heavier, which one's faster, which one doesn't belong. And it is a lot of really great review as well as logic. And that is one of the reasons that I decided to go ahead and use this workbook this year. It is for grades six and seven, and we'll be using this this year on into next year. But I do like the logic that is behind Dare to Compare Math. So that's our great update for math. We are loving it. It's going well. I'm so thankful for not only dimensions, but the supplements that I have found for this year. If you do like these update videos, please make sure you are subscribed because in addition to the language video that I already have out, I will be coming out with geography and history. Now, speaking of geography, we are doing My Father's World, Exploring Countries and Cultures for Geography. And in it, they do include some science, but it's not a lot of science. Now we have through Exploring Countries and Cultures, the biomes. And so you get that from the Living World Encyclopedia. My Father's World also utilizes the ecosystems portion of this chemistry and ecology from Master's Books. And again, we love it. I love the fact that it incorporates the biomes with geography. I think that is wonderful, but it's simply not enough science for my daughter. It is almost boring to her because she needs a little bit more challenge. She needs a little bit more to do. What we have done is we're working through properties of matter, which we will be finishing next week. And then we're going to move on to the properties of atoms and molecules. And this God's Design series from Masterbooks is something that I love. I love the short chapters. They are very easy to read, easy to understand. Then when we finish this, which we will a little bit before the school year is over, we are going to go back and work on inventions and technology from the physical world. We did not study it when we were doing physical world. And so we're going back to it because we really do like the inventions and the history behind inventions. And so I'm excited to get into that one as well. So science was something that was a pretty slow start for us. And it was mainly because I was trying to follow that my father's world, exploring countries and cultures, science Science, and I should have just jumped in with both feet rather than trying to follow it even though I knew it wasn't enough science for my daughter. One thing to note with the Master's Book God Design series is they say this is for grades three through eight. My daughter is in sixth grade and she does like science. So that's something to keep in mind with what I'm about to tell you. 
when we were doing this in fourth grade and fifth grade, she loved it. She loved the Master Books God's Design series. For the fourth and fifth grade years, you would read up through this blue box and then you would do whatever is in the blue box. That was your experiment. Now in sixth, seventh and eighth grade, they want you to do that. And then additionally, they want you to do whatever is in the green box. Well, this green box is just too big of a jump for us. And that is discouraging to me because I do love the God's Design series. We have done all of the books, at least a part of all of the books in the series. And I will be coming out with a video reviewing all four of the books in that series, but we are going to be moving away. So there are parts of three of the books, which I'm not sure we will finish this school year, and we are just going to drop them and move to a different science curriculum next year, which is pretty sad because I do love the God's Design series, but there just comes times sometimes where you have to move on. And so I am working right now on my video for curriculum picks, which will be coming out probably next month. 